everybody, George Fennell, Steel Shield Technologies Weapon Shield, back today with another demo. Uh, today we're going to show you one of our most requested products. Um, people have asked us to run on the Felix Lubricant Tester, and that being Frog Lube. Um, I'm going to emphasize a couple of things first, though. If you look at Frog Lube and the price on it, this is $29.99 according to the retail price on this. Our retail price is $11.99, both four ounce bottles. With that said, everybody I think from our previous videos knows how this works. This is a Felix lubricant tester, been around about 70 years, made by the Felix Corporation in Aurora, Ohio. Um, it's an analog to the D-2509 ASTM testing ma machine called the Tim Kanoki Load, kind of a portable version. Um, it's qualitative, not quantitative. It doesn't give you hardcore data, um, but it gives you, you know, fairly good data that would be considered qualitative in nature. What we're going to do is we're going to start out. We have a new bearing, which is a Felix Lubricant uh, or Felix Corporation. Uh, test roll. These are certified test roll bearings, which are tapered roller bearings. They have a softer rock weld and a race. This is a Timken race that's on here, made by the Timken Corporation, which is attached to the shaft. It's a 1745 quarter horse motor, 1745 RPMs. The pulley system reduces it down to about 800 to set up a boundary condition. Uh, boundary conditions are high wear conditions. So what we're going to do is we use the fulcrum system to imply force so that every pound on this scale is equal to about 35 pounds after we go put it through the fulcrum pressure and work the force formula of force equals mass times the acceleration. And there's the test ring and this is on the shaft, there's one on there with this retainer on the end. Once again, just recapping the machine if you haven't seen the other demos so you know what's going on. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of frog lube and we're going to put it right on here. As you can see, we've coated the, the raceway. We're going to turn our machine and let it spin around, lubricate between the bearing and the race. And we're going to now apply some pressure to the system. That's where. That's about three pounds and it seeds to lock up. Three pounds again. So we're, we're pretty consistent at about a three pound uh, seizure. It starts wearing at about one pound. So you can get a look at the, the wear mark there. At about one pound, we start to hear the uh, audible presence of wear. You hear the metal start to tear and become damaged. And then the damage continues. The surface area, as you can see, from a point to point is expanded greatly because of that wear mark. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the and just wipe the frog loop off of here. Also going to take, wipe it off of here, loosen up my bearing, I use that as a wrench by the way, and I'm going to drop my bearing out, wipe the inside out to get all the other traces of stuff out of there, and I think it's notable, I, I've put it on my um, Facebook page and it's, um, we've discussed it many times on Facebook and in the uh, Weapon Shield user group, that if you're using frog lube, uh, and you go to another lubricant or vice versa, whether it's weapon shield or not, make sure that you clean all of the frog lube off because uh, the nature of frog lube being a vegetable plant type oil has esters in it and if you mix it with any other oil that's of a synthetic variety or a petroleum variety, you get kind of a, a super mess. Um, it polymerizes and in, in especially in cold weather, you can have severe problems of weapons actually just seizing up 
and not firing. So um, that's not to say anything bad. It's just to say clean the weapon good. Make sure uh, if you're going to use frog lube, whatever you've had on there, clean it. If you're going to use switch from frog lube to something else, clean it very well because it can affect the operation of your weapon. And that we don't want to see. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this, I'm going to switch it just to a spot beside it so you can see by comparison what we're doing. In fact, I'll set it up there and we'll see the difference in the wear marks. I'll tighten that down. Now, before I do that, I'm also, I'm going to take the galling that's on this raceway. I'm going to use the stone as we do every time. I'm going to remove that galling and that welding of the softer bearing material onto this harder raceway. We do that until it's smooth. Take our brake cleaner. Spray that, degrease it very well. Make sure it's degreased, dry it again. Make sure that surface is very dry. So we can get the same point that we had at startup when we started the demonstration with the, um, with the frog loom. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to take some of our weapon shield, and the reason I could use a bottle if I'm going to use this because I can control this a little bit easier. I'm just going to put a drop, as we normally do, a drop of weapon shield on the raceway, exactly as we did with the frog loop. I'm going to set it down, let it run for a second. And if you recall, there's where we failed. You don't hear any metal being torn. You don't hear any damage occurring. Let's go down. On our other video, right about there is where our brake tree failed, where we set the standard. Now we pull down further. I mean, keep in mind, we have this machine clamped to the table so we can exert this time of pressure. And there's 25 pounds. There's the bottom of the scale. And no seizure, no metal torn. Now what I want to do is show you the difference. And I'll set it here. Matt's going to zoom in on that. And I think you can see above it the frog lube mark, which is kind of huge. And what you see below it there, the little dot, that's the weapon shield. That's advanced boundary film technology. That is a protection against extreme pressure, wear, all of the varying, uh, I guess you would say, parameters that your firearm can go through under the heat of operation, um, especially in, in rapid full auto fire or in competition. Competition is where we see quite a lot of guns failing and we get fail to feed, fail to extract and then of course sometimes just because the gun heats up and the fit of slides to frame and guide rails to bolt carriers is so tight that they seize because the heat causes a swelling or a changing uh, of the tolerances. This prevents it. This is why you hear everybody say, I started using weapon shield in my competitive guns and I've had no more failures. I constantly have nothing but good runs, and you know that. I mean, that's that's the status quo right there. So, visit us at WeaponShield.com. You can order the product from there. You can see there's a button up on top that says Order Online or Order. Um, and please, you know, utilize our distributors. Brownells carry it. Uh, Midway USA, Sportsman's Guide, um, uh, Blitzkrieg Tactical, San Diego Surplus Supply. You'll see many of them there. Um, your choice is yours. Uh, 
The other thing is you can order it directly from us too. If you have a problem, we prefer you to order it from them, but feel free to call us at our 800 toll free. It's 800-390-1535. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We'll do our best to answer them for you. So once again, uh, we brought you another demo. I'm sure we'll be bringing you more in the future. I'm George Fennell, Steel Shield Technologies, Weapon Shield. Have a great day, everyone.